Um, this is a really nice moment to be talking to you, not nice in the sense that we're worried about truth and a post-truth world, but it's a moment that sort of clarifies a lot of really interesting ways that the impact of the internet is playing out on our world. So let's start with the fact that this is the first holiday gift giving season that it's pretty likely that online gift buying is going to exceed in-store gift buying at different places. It's the week that a Bitcoin now sells for $10,000. It's a week that the Supreme Court has heard an amazing privacy case that involves whether smartphones can be used by police to figure out what suspects are doing. The delicious irony of that case is that the case emerges from a string of robberies at radio shacks where the alleged thieves stole smartphones and then were tracked by police uh, to catch up with them. And the Supreme Court will be deciding in this coming term whether that's a legitimate use of, of police power or whether that's an unreasonable search of people because essentially our lives are stored on these uh, devices. It's also a week that we, I, I saw the first prediction that uh, web-based ad revenues will exceed television-based revenues next year. But it's also a period where there is an indisputably awful thing happening. And the most iconic example was on October 1st in the shooting in Las Vegas, where 58 uh, people ended up dying and 500 were wounded at a, at a, a country music concert. Immediately after the first news flashes of that event came about, there were tweets by trolls and there were Facebook posts by trolls that gave the wrong names of suspects in the case, that branded innocent people as accomplices in the case, that created links to fake Facebook pages that looked like left-wing people were claiming credit uh, for the shooting. And there were allegations that are always come up in these things that paid crisis actors by the government were fomenting this for some purpose of government policy making. The same dynamic played out at the Sutherland, Texas, Sutherland, Sutherland Springs, Texas shooting um, at a church a month ago. Watching all these things happen, Keith Roos wrote in the New York Times, over the past few years, extremists, conspiracy theorists, and government-backed propagandists have made a habit of swarming major news events using search-optimized keyword bombs and algorithm-friendly headlines. These organizations are skilled at reverse engineering the way that tech platforms parse information. And they benefit from the vast real-time amplification network that includes Facebook, Twitter, and Google. It's not surprising now that serious pundits are writing about a media environment that they call exemplary of a failed state. And there are seven trends in the data that we gather at Pew Research that sort of play into this narrative that things aren't really going well on the internet. So trend number one is a wonderful notion that I think I can accurately attribute to the American novelist David Foster Wallace, who talked about an environment of to total noise that comes from the internet. Wallace wrote, Total noise is the sound of our US culture right now, a culture in volume of information and spin and rhetoric and context that I know I'm not alone in finding too much to even absorb. To really try to be informed and literate today is to feel stupid nearly all of the time and need help. In Pew data, we see that 64% of American adults now say that fake news is such a problem that they can't figure out what's going on in current events. 23% of adults say that they have actually passed along fake news. 17% say that they have done it inadvertently. 16% say they've done it knowingly. And if you add up the yes answers to either one of those, that comes up to a quarter of Americans. The problem has reached the personal level. A quarter of Americans now say that fake information about themselves has been posted online about their reputation, about their background, about their beliefs, about their history. And in an environment where people's reputation now is the primary value that they have in their life, these kinds of wrong information can be devastating to the jobs they hold, the credit they apply for, the romantic partners they try to meet, almost every dimension of their lives. 
These are signs of a confused and conflicted culture, which brings me to the second trend that I'll bring up. Political polarization permeates information spaces and affects everything that happens there as people deal with each other. One way to think about this uh, as you look at Pew data is to look at two groups that used to be pretty important in our culture, liberal Republicans and conservative Democrats. Since 1994, Pew Research has been doing surveys of Americans about their political values, what they think about national security issues, social policy issues, what they think about poverty programs, what they think is right and wrong in our culture. And in 1994, when we assessed all of these values, we found that the median Republican, sort of the middle stage Republican, was more liberal than 36% of Democrats. So those were liberal Republicans. Today, that number, 36%, has collapsed to 5%. Similarly, in 1994, 30% of Democrats were more conservative than the median Republican. Today, that number is 3%. Now, why does this matter? Well, if you remember a little bit of history, it used to be liberal Republicans and conservative Democrats who held policy deliberations together. They were often courted by the other side. They often were determinative of what policies got passed in this country. And it wasn't really smart politics to be criticizing uh, liberals or Democrats because that was, in some ways, criticizing an important part of your own tribe. Well, nowadays, that when the political parties have purified themselves, those kinds of insults and ad hominem attacks and imputing the worst kind of motives to your opponents is fair game because there aren't many of those liberal Republicans and conservative Democrats on your team to worry about alienating. The third trend is that a fractured media ecosystem lets people tailor their information and customize their trust. I can talk to you later on about um, echo chambers and stuff like that. I don't think we see that in our data. But one of the most devastating things we see is that people are definitely balkanizing their media uh, diet. And conservatives are going to sites that they like, and liberals are going to different sites that they like. And actually, one of the most toxic things that's happening in our culture is that now colleges and universities have been brought into this dynamic. Brand new Pew data from this spring suggests that Republicans essentially don't think colleges and universities are good for this country anymore. They're, they're willing to say that colleges and universities do a decent job training people for jobs, but where uh, two-thirds of Republicans just five years ago thought that college and colleges and universities were a good force in our culture, now only a minority of Republicans think that. 